Welcome to Motivation Monday. Today we are talking about completing a customer journey, taking them from a non-prospect to a prospect, and then finally to a client. And while you're waiting on the promo, go ahead and just like and subscribe uh, because you definitely want to get more content like this, right? All right, so let's dig into the content we're talking about today. I always tell people, hey, I was in marketing for over 10 years and a decade. That sounds like such a long time. But if you're in sales, you're in marketing every single day. And understanding that marketing process from start to finish is such a big deal. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight on what we call a customer journey means, what it is, and why it's so important to actually creating and completing sales in your business. So there's a couple of different things I want to talk about today. The first part is how do we attract customers? Because that's the very first part of the customer journey. You have to bring them in. And when you think about social media, I hear a couple of different things. People love social media and they think it's the bee's knees or they hate social media and they think it's a huge waste of time. Sometimes you're somewhere in the middle. And I'll be real honest, even though I have a good presence on social media, I'm not a big fan. It's a lot of work and there's a lot of content you have to create and it's 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 not easy. And there's a lot of what I would call fluff content out there in the market, and especially in our industry, things that don't really matter, but at the same time, they're important, and it's a hard balance to maintain. But when you think about attracting a customer, what are they looking for? One of the most common things that you see is when people want to find someone that has a presence on social media. So you have to figure out where your audience is, what age, what gender, what platforms they're on, and then attack that platform. So whether that's Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or LinkedIn, you really just have to figure out where your audience really spends a lot of their time and what's going to be the best investment for you. And that's not always easy, guys. Uh, I think at one point I was managing up to 14 different social media pages for a brand or six different brands at the time. And it was a lot of work. And things have changed drastically since that day. And now the emphasis is on video. And so you're constantly creating content. And a lot of my agents feel overwhelmed, but I have some good news. It's not that hard. It's little pieces of content. And you have to f- pick and choose what that uh, what that platform wants and focus on that one thing that they're going after. That's really the key to success for maximizing your exposure on any social media profile is figure out what they want and how to give it to them. So, and then how do you connect that to your audience? So you have to find the intersection between what your audience wants and what the platform is demanding for you to be successful. So like right now, Instagram, they are trying to compete with TikTok. So they want you to do reels constantly. So if you look at my Instagram, there's almost no stories, almost no regular posts. It's all reels because that's what they want. Um, Similar things can happen on other platforms. So you got to really just kind of dig in and find out what you want. If you're interested, if you're local, we are having a mastermind group this Wednesday in Burleson. But if you're not local, I'm also happy to do a Zoom call so we can go over the same content. And we'll be having an Instagram class the following week and we'll deep dive into those. But this is just the first step in the process. We're attracting customers, right? So we're trying to get followers and likes and people to subscribe uh, onto your channel, onto your network, and you're trying to build that content. So that's step one. We've got an active audience that's listening to what we have to say, and they're not necessarily just scrolling through and going away. They're sticking around. They want to find out what you have of interest to them that matters, So now we've got an attracted customer and then we engage them as a prospect. In my opinion, a prospect becomes someone who gives us more contact information. So if someone is truly willing to give you an email or a phone number, they can be considered a prospect at that point. So then we transfer them further into the customer journey and we start giving them things of value that they will find useful and attempting to get them to either reach out to us to buy a product, to use us as their realtor, to use us as their expert, or to uh, continue that process and to just 
kind of dig in deeper, right? So you're moving them through the sales funnel. They're interested in you. They want you to reach out to them. If they, this is a big thing, guys. You will have people that will drop off. You will have people that put um, less than nice emails in, in as an email. If you put up a landing page, they're gonna put F you off at gmail.com. Like that, that happens. Um, I'm sure that's a real email out there somewhere and that'd be interesting to see what comes in from that one. But people are rude whenever they think it's just a computer they're talking to. They don't recognize that it's you as a person behind the gate that's actually seeing those. And sometimes you'll send out a text message and they'll say stop like it's an automated message and like, no, thanks. That was actually me. I'm a real person. That's part of the process. So let that roll off your shoulders, guys. We live in an automated world and people don't necessarily see you as a person when you're sending them an email. They see you as a piece of technology. Just saying. Don't don't be scared by it. Just get over it. It'll be fine. Keep moving forward. Okay, and then we have, so we've, we've brought them from just attracting a customer, then we brought them into this realm of being a prospect where they're actually interested in talking to us, and now we're converting them into a lead, so, or excuse me, we're converting them into a client who is someone who has purchased a product from us or used our services, right? So if they've sold a home and you were their realtor, the congratulations, they are a client, and that's exciting, but here's the deal. The customer journey does not end the day that they get the keys, right? We know that all great realtors know this. It's more about that client. How do we keep that client forever? Because they they want to hear from you. Uh, it's like a divorce. Whenever you <laughs> whenever you finalize a closing, you don't hear from your realtor anymore. It's like what where'd they go? <laughs> like, if you've been talking to someone like on a dating app and all of a sudden they're, they disappeared and you've been used to talking to them every five minutes, it's it's just like, where'd they go? I don't know. And, it, and so you want to make sure that client relationship grows and they become an advocate. So we went from attracting a potential customer to converting them into a lead and a prospect. Then we've got a client and now we've got an advocate who is someone who is always going to go to bat for you. So when someone says, oh, I might be selling my house, guess what? That person's going to go, I know a realtor and I think you should absolutely use them. That's what you want. So that is the customer journey in a nutshell, but you've got to have the right tools in place to be able to complete that process. That's why I'm a heavy advocate for CRMs. I'm a heavy advocate for using them, not just having them. And yes, it's not always pretty. It's not always easy. And guys, y'all are so lucky in the real estate industry because there are so many different CRMs that you can use that already have content. Guys, I am on my own. <laughs> I have to generate all my own content, do all my own manual stuff. Thank goodness I have a CRM and I do love it, but I no one has something that's gonna feed me content. You do. So you have have way less of an excuse. And if you work for a bigger brokerage, a lot of them have uh, customer management campaigns for birthdays, for recipe cards, for all sorts of content. So please, please, please take advantage of those things because here's what you want. You want a list of A advocates that are going to fight for you, whether it's their home, their kid's home, their neighbor's home, or anyone else that they know because they know and love you. And the only way they can continue to know and love you is if you continue to stay in front of them. And guys, what's most expensive is to attract a new customer. So, and that's a standard rule in any marketing sphere you're ever in. The most expensive place to find a customer is at the very beginning because then you have to move them all the way through the process. So if you can keep your advocates in the system and keep your advocates knowing that they are loved by their realtor, guys, that's priceless. And you will you will live off referrals. That's just how it works. Um, yeah, we're expanding the content a little bit. I hope this was helpful. I'm trying to give you a little more meat, but if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. If you want me to expand on one of these sections, I love to hear from my realtors. If you want to call me and let's have a conversation, guys, I don't charge anything for this. This is just free advice. So, uh, just give me a call, connect with me, subscribe to the channel. I am here for you. I am your title rep for life and I love you guys. Go out there, kick some butt this week, make those contacts, and don't forget about the people who've already bought from you because they will be your biggest advocates. And so am I. Bye, guys.